Hi, I'm Tom Craven, and I'm going to explain where the three song no flash rule came from and why I think it's actually important to keep it. Let's get into the video. In music photography, there is a general rule of the first three songs, no flash for any show. And that is really because of Bruce Springsteen. In the mid 80s, uh, he got sick of New York photographers popping the flash at the entire show, really distracting him and the audience and being able to actually interact with the uh, crowd. He adopted that the first 15 minutes and uh, no flash for uh, photographers. And then the, the, and that really works out about three songs. So then many people have now taken that and most people kind of follow that rule vaguely. Um, and actually, I think this is really important to keep in place for a large portion of shows. I feel like this is an important rule to keep for publications because the publications only need several shots really to be able to do a review of the show. They don't need 40, 50, 60 solid images of one show. They just need a handful. And also actually it will drive creativity because you've only got three songs to work it out, so 15 minutes to work out what you're gonna get and how you're gonna best capture this artist in this moment and what you can do differently in them 15 minutes instead of just taking the same photo again and again and again. Three songs means that you have to be concise in what you go and capture and it actually allows you to think a little bit differently. You're not so worried about actually being able to capture every little detail of them, you're just capturing what is available to you. So for instance, uh, the catfish and the bottle men, they often have a lot of their set in just red light, especially the first three songs. This means all photos of them are usually black and white. And that I think is done on purpose, because if you go to their Instagram, it's all black and white photos that they want. So they're probably trying to make it that all the photos of them are black and white. And this makes sense. Quite often I've heard of musicians who pick very specific songs or lighting design for them for three songs, knowing that they're gonna be the ones that are photographed. And then after that, it doesn't really matter so much. And also later on in a show, the artists are gonna become sweaty and tired and they may not want photos of them looking like that. So it's quite important to only have the first three songs. Also, the show is not for photographers it is for the fans. So it's not important that I go and get, get as many images as possible of this artist. It's not that important. What's important is actually the fans enjoying the show. So if at any point I am a distraction, that is a negative impact that I'm having on the show. So if you can concisely make it that it's first 15 minutes or the first three songs, of the show, at least after that, they get to enjoy the next hour, hour and a half, or whatever it is of that show without me there. I feel that this is different if you are photographing for the artists themselves, because you're trying to capture a full range of shots for them. And maybe in the first three songs, they don't play the piano, but in the fourth they do. So it'd be important to go and get a few shots, but then you're not in the pit. You don't have to shoot from the pit then. You can go and shoot, from within the crowd or on stage or behind the stage or up on a balcony you can go and find different places to be other than the pit because the pit is very much in the way of the crowd at the front then the fans have come and rushed to the front and they have waited there throughout the support acts so that they get to be as close as possible to the artist that they really like and then I stand in front of them with my hair that's why I don't tend to be in the middle of a pit. I'm very much at the side. Also, it's just better photos anyway at the side, let's be honest. And I feel like if you are one of those that is struggling with the three songs and not getting enough images, you really need to actually challenge yourself to get them in them three songs. I now have it down to where I can get, if it's a solo artist, I can probably do it within two songs what I want. I don't need any more than that. And that's because I've come from that background of shooting as a publication and not for the artist that I now need to get it concisely down to that very quickly. I need to be able to work out the different angles, the different compositions that I can get and different lighting that are gonna be there that are available to me in them three songs and get it. This is where the research really comes into hand that like 
if you know that they always play a certain song first, you can always look it up online and see what the lighting is like for that song because it's most likely the same for every time they do that, that song and therefore you can work out where would be best to be positioned and also what kind of shot would be best of them. Like some artists have it that the first song that they are just completely backlit, which means you're gonna do silhouettes and that is fine. You just need to know that in advance so then you can prepare for that and it doesn't take you by surprise. Also, knowing your artist just in general, it's really important to know which hands they hold a microphone with because certain angles are gonna be better, especially if it's a tall stage like uh, Manchester Albert Hall, that is a really high stage and a very small pit. So you're looking up at the artist. So you really need to go from the sides. But even then, if someone's holding a microphone, this elbow can get in the way of their face. So therefore you really need to be positioning yourself over onto this side of them. So then you can get that full face shot as well. Again, it's just having this bit of knowledge about what the artist is going to, is likely to do that can really help you in the three songs that you're given. So why do you never want to use flash? Well, it never really looks good. It's massively distracting to the artist and to the crowd. And also that the on-stage lighting is often going to be way better because at least it will make an atmosphere. Whereas if you just blast them with a flash, it's just going to whitewash them completely and they're just gonna kind of, it's just gonna be like a snapshot instead of being something that you can kind of mold and create a bit of artwork there out of it. Because even bad lighting can be artistic and you can make it, you can turn it into a silhouette. So for instance, I have a shot of St. Raymond that I'm gonna put up now that actually the lighting was awful, like for a show because it was an outdoor show. It was in a little hut and the light was directly above him and it was right to one side. So it just casted awful shadows. I was able to find this one spot where I could get this and kind of make it almost like a silhouette, just like with a bit of rim lighting. And I just really like it. Um, and it's just been able to make the best of what was available to me. Because if I popped a flash, it would have just been very whitewashed. Yes, you'd have been able to see all of him, but it'd been very whitewashed and it wouldn't really have evoked any kind of emotion at all. It would have just been, here is an artist on a stage. As Adam Elmakai says, at a gig, the photographer is the least important person. It's really the artist and the fans, and that's it. They are the most important people there. No one else really matters. So this is why the rule is so important to have it that you're only limited to the first three songs, because all you're gonna do is be distracting most of the time. Unless you're working for the artist and getting to places that aren't going to be noticed by the audience. Like so the back of the stage is obviously very dimly lit so you might not even notice that there's a photographer that's just in the corner just hiding away and then you can get a photo of the artist and the crowd and it's just been able to get into different places that you wouldn't ordinarily get with just being press and that's that's when it's different. Let me know what you think about the first three songs no flash rule in the comments below and also don't forget to subscribe. See ya.